Hi there, my friends! I'm Marina Vitkina and I'm back with my weekly Hit or Miss series. And we continue analyzing the art that is trading right now on the market. We'll see pieces that are great and worth investing, probably, and ones that are there for you to absolutely avoid. I will share my experience and art expert tips and tricks. Today, we'll talk about the epoch of the King son Louis the 14th and you will even hear his real voice. Are you ready? Let's get started. So my friends, let's get down to business. You will see me talking and you will see my screen. So let's start. Well, and this time I decided uh, to start with this portrait. Have a look. Making it bigger. What's interesting in that, would you say? Actually, there is one interesting thing. Have a look that I wanted to share with you. It's uh, one of the professional tips and tricks and for you uh, what's important uh, in the painting to look closer at. So actually it's quite an, an average painting and I'll explain you why. It is said British school, 19th century, ordered of a gentleman. We see here frame that may appear quite rich and fabulous but actually it's a 19th century frame and I would say that's probably mid 19th century. Um, as I promised I'll make a dedicated video uh, about the frames and you will see the difference uh, from the 18th century and 19th century frames and earlier frames and later frames. Uh, well, the general idea about that is a 19th century frame, though seeming rich, is an imitation of 18th century. Uh, and the design here is not that, it doesn't have that volume and uh, it's just like, you know, an imitation of rich decoration of 18th century. But okay, the portrait deserves this very frame, and it's even good. But the interesting thing here is the back side. Actually, back sides of the paintings are probably most more interesting and sometimes more important uh, than um, um, the facade of the painting. Here we are. Have a look. Uh, there is such uh, there, there is something on the back. I made a I made a photo, turned it up so we can analyze analyze it here. It is said, prepared panel, Windsor and Newton, artist, colorman to Her Majesty, His Royal Hi and His Royal Highness Prince Albert. London something blah blah blah. <clears throat> well, what does that mean? Actually, by having this very label on the back, we can definitely say when the portrait was painted. Right now, it is said only 19th century. You know, by the way, before I, I'll tell you how we're gonna do that, let's actually check. Is it really a 19th century portrait or not? Um, I will upload this very image of a portrait uh, in my connoisseur app on the phone. Here it is. And we'll check it out. By the way, do you already know when uh, this hairstyle was popular? If you don't, definitely use the app. Uh, but um, that's the interesting fact. It said 19th century, but I'll tell you the truth. The hair on the back doesn't seem to be 19th century at all. He, he seemed to have like a white wig, uh, quite a long hair. The dressing is more or less 19th century, the beginning of it, but the hair, no. And here you are. It's Louis XV style. It's his epoch. It was um, popular from 1720s up to 1790s this week, this white week with a little uh, tail on the back. And um, uh, this fashion was uh, in its uh, peak until the French Revolution, 1790-1792. So, a little bit strange, yeah? Plus uh, the paint application here, have a look once again, uh, and how it is painted. It's not 18th century at all. And you see here the fun fact. It is 18th century by hairstyle and appearance, but not 18th century at all by everything else. That probably means that this is a copy of some work of 18th century or an imitation of 18th century look. Let's discover further. Uh, back to the panel and the label on its back. 
Miss Windsor & Newton, very famous English uh, company that produced colors, paints and brushes, everything. Plus, they produced these wooden panels for artists to paint on. By looking at this very uh, label, I may tell you right now, it's 1850s, right the middle of 19th century. How do I know? Actually, have a look. I had a painting of my own in my collection. I still have it. I still own it, by the way. And uh, on the back of that very painting of mine, I had um, practically the same label. You see, prepared panel, Windsor & Newton Limited, artist colorman to Her Majesty and to their Royal Highnesses, the Prince and Princess of Wales. And the address on the back. You see the difference here. Here it said, to Her Majesty and to Their Royal Highnesses, Prince and Princess of Wales. And here, to Her Majesty and His Royal Highness, Prince Albert. No Prince Albert here. Do I already getting the clue? One more thing then. Have a look. We may go to Windsor and Newton website. They have a very interesting website. And uh, as it's a um, company, a firm with a quiet... Uh, a uh, long history, we may know what happened exactly at what time. And here we see, they were founded in 1832. Then what happened next? In 1837, Queen Victoria ascends to the throne. Uh, and only in 1841, uh, they uh, were awarded this first um, opportunity to put the, this appointment of HRH um, on the back of, uh, uh, of their panels or any other goods they produced. In 1881, Winsor Newton became a limited liability company. Henry Newton died and they sold the business. And that's how uh, on their labels they started to put this limited liability. Have a look. Winsor Newton Limited. And that's how I, I got the precise information that my very painting, this one, maybe one day I'll make a video about it, it's a very interesting one, uh, was painted later than 1881. By the way, it was painted in 1890s. But this one doesn't have this limited here. That means it was painted before 1881. But have a look. Here we have to Her Royal Highness, Her Majesty, and His Royal Highness, Prince Albert. That means Prince Albert was still alive at that time. This very painting was painted before 1860s. But I would say uh, it's something 1850s, right in the middle. Because the label changed a little bit from 1841 they, they, when they were first appointed. And that's how, by just looking on the back, you can narrow the time when the painting was painted. I guess it's, it's, it's really interesting, it's fun. So every detail matters. Do remember that and always check the information on the back that you have. And so what we got? We got the painting definitely painted in 1850s, but the look and the style, at least the hair, is from the 18th century. Um, let's have a look here. We don't have that much information. By the way, yeah, it said 1850s. I promise I didn't, I didn't see that. But that's just um, if they wouldn't put that here, that's how you may know, but just looking on the back. That's very interesting. Or they may like put 1850s, but there is nothing on the back. But here we can prove really 1850s, so it's not 18th century portrait. But 18th century gentlemen, why would anyone in 1850s, more than 50 years after, paint someone from 18th century? Have a look. The painting is quite small, 11 by 8 inches. So I believe that was a copy of some bigger painting painted for some like gift purpose or for some memory purpose just to keep and that's it, it's not a miniature it's a little bit bigger but that's what how miniatures transformed in 19th century so i guess that's a copy of a previous um, epoch's painting Maybe initial painting was by the hand of some renowned English artist, who knows? We should make a better and deeper research. I showed it you because it's very interesting what you can see by just judging on the back. So, let's get further. Oh, well, here it is. What we got here? Dipinto. In Italian, that means uh, portrait. Here, portrait. 
Olio su telo, raffinato ritratto di nobile uomo con vestito rosso, secolo XVIII. That means that it's all on canvas, um, refined portrait uh, of a noble person uh, wearing something red uh, of 18th century. Very interesting piece, I must say. It doesn't cost that much, but still pretty much for a painting with uh, zero provenance. Yes, nothing is said, and uh, zero information. Why it caught my eye? Actually, I really love the face here. I really love it. Have a look. Let me... Yes. The traits of the face. Uh, the warmth of the body, of skin. It's, it's all there. Actually, have a look at the lace. It's said that the picture is not that uh, is not in high definition, but even with this quality of the photo, we can see that the lace is pretty exquisite. I like the hair here, and they all look and feel. But why then it costs only one point five thousand euros? Why so? It's quite a nice painting. Actually, have a look at it. What the hell is that? Would you say? It looks quite strange. Really? Yes. But uh, there is actually a very interesting thing. Have a look. Why these areas look genuine, I would say, here as well. And this looks like a um, new addition or something, something extra, something done by the other hand. Another interesting thing that I wanted to share with you here. Let's try to draw the line. Have a look. Here how it goes. Follow my mouse. And probably here. Did you get the idea? The painting, though we don't have its backside, but it's clear that the painting was initially oval. Why then it's now uh, rectangular and why did they have to overpaint here to make it feel, look and feel like a rectangular one? A very interesting fact. Actually, in um, the end of 17th century and uh, probably the first half and maybe like the whole 18th century, uh, there was a fashion for oval paintings in oval frames. And uh, many, many paintings, I wouldn't say all of them, but majority of paintings of noble men and women were painted to be oval and to be fit in oval frames. Here was the case. But another interesting fact, I don't know how about you, but I think all paintings look great and they have this look and feel, they look quite exquisite. But actually, in 19th century, the fashion changed completely. They started, really, they started to hate oval frames. It seemed very old-fashioned for, pe for people in 19th century and they wanted to get rid of them. That's why many paintings, while being restored in 19th century, um, changed their shape. They took these oval canvases, put it on new canvases and added uh, the missing parts here. Have a look. Here it's not that visible because it's dark and here and here. And that added, overpainted these missing parts. And that's why it's quite common actually to see a portrait of 18th century and even the end of 17th century, but with some overpainting in, um, in the edges and in the angles of the painting. Actually, that doesn't make um, this one, probably not this one, maybe even this one, but that doesn't ruin the painting. So if you really like a painting that was previously oval, but right now is rectangular, and that really doesn't add that much, because this part doesn't add that much. It actually, uh, yes, it actually decreases the value of the painting. What, then, if you still decide to buy it, you may take it to a very good restorer, and he will eliminate this, uh, um, this artificially added parts and overpaint and will bring it back to you, to its original shape, the old one, and you will see only the genuine, original artist's hand. That's what I do. 
and this very painting i really really love it um i don't have the back side but yeah we already can tell a lot by this very picture definitely if uh, me or you should decide to bid for it we should ask for additional photos uh, including the back side but what's interesting here uh, right now it is said uh, 18th century but actually i think that that's the end of the 17th century uh, let me check it once again with um, my connoisseur app. I will do it right now in, uh, in the web page and I already did that for you. Have a look. It's Louis XIV, King's son. Uh, it's the end of the 17th century. Uh, this style was popular from the mid 17th century and was still popular in the very beginning of it. But a very interesting fact is that Look at the right painting here. That's the king's son himself, Louis XIV. Uh, he, actually, that was not his natural hair. He started to lose his hair when he was young. And uh, that's why he was wearing these big uh, wigs. He preferred wigs in the color of natural hair. Uh, right now, you can see right here, you can see it's black or blackish uh, or dark brown. And the painting that we were examining here is again in the natural hairstyle, but I'm sure you have seen many times paintings in this very type of wigs, definitely Louis XIV style, but in white ones. That's interesting because Louis XIV preferred it to be natural, like dark, but his son, Le Dauphin, Le Grand Dauphin, the heir to the throne, he loved these very paintings, but to be in white. Uh, and that's actually happened uh, already in the 18th century. I will show you later a very interesting uh, picture that will prove, um, not this theory, but this practice. Actually, that's how it happened. And here you can see the wig is uh, in its natural color. And that's why I think uh, it's more in um, uh, the style, in the fashion of late 17th century. Moreover, I would say if it's not, it's probably not by the hand of Nicolas de Largelier, uh, um, but um, probably that's uh, the school, the circle, or the follower of him. Uh, definitely, uh, we, uh, we can make a further research and more or less um, put a name, give a painting a name, or at least give it attributed to, identify who might be the potential author. Uh, why uh, here even I like um, the face, how it is done so much, and the hair, and the lace here. Uh, so I see this maestri, I see this artist's hand, and how freely it was painted, and uh, how confident the artist was. So I believe that that was done by a really good artist, or at least um, by, uh, by the studio of that really good artist. We'll talk about artists and the studio a little bit later, so keep watching the videos, many, many, many new things coming. So uh, here I would definitely recommend go for this very painting. By the way, still, if, if we are started talking by Louis XIV, uh, I just wanted to share with you one fact. Recently I learned about um, the series that was produced by French Canal Plus, uh, the television production company, they produced a series about the life of King Saint Louis, Louis XIV. It's called Versailles, as far as I remember. But the interesting fact is that they claim to reproduce the real voice of King Sun. Uh, they say that uh, scientists and art historians analyzed uh, all the physical details of King Sun and they say it's known, uh, all the diaries, um, the memoirs of people living together with him. And that's how they were able to build, uh, with, with the help of artificial intelligence, just like here with Connoisseur, uh, they uh, built uh, reconstructed better to say his real voice and um, in this very series uh, they make him talk to us like the real king son is talking to us so i just wanted to share with you listen to it bonjour le monde je m'appelle louis 14 <laughs> 
So wasn't it fun? I guess that's really interesting. So yeah, I, I put it on my list to watch the Versailles and to listen further him talking. That's what I recommend doing to you. I'm not sure about the quality, but I think it's good. Well, my friends, that's the end of the part one of this video. You will see the second part next week. We'll talk about and I'll show you how restoration can actually ruin the painting. Be sure not to miss that. Subscribe to my channel. Your likes are highly appreciated. And see you next week. Bye-bye.